Tsukimi, who else would it be? This is Observations with Otsu, Tuesday edition. Um, hope you're having a good weekend, or hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a good Monday as well. Markets have been very interesting. That's pretty much going to be the theme of this video. If you want to kind of summarize that in one sentence, we had a good bullish weekend overall. We had a very critical um, weekly open where we kind of had almost like a flash crash for like the first four hours. <clears throat> and it was a little bit scary for some people even. Uh, we kind of recovered somewhat. I would classify that as a bearish retest. I know that's almost like saying like a cuss word nowadays because the market has gone up and then you don't want to offend people. But, you know, six months ago, everybody was screaming that we should go down to zero or 12,000. But now, now saying that very same thing is offensive. And that's where a lot of people are really behind or they're susceptible to the market psychological effects of the prices going up or down. And so we'll kind of address this overall. <clears throat> um, I think that there's some evidence to suggest that we are going to put things on pause, perhaps until Christmas time, uh, perhaps even till the end of the year. I don't think the markets, the markets look okay. I don't think the markets look bad by any means. And so I'm not suggesting that we're going to go down significantly. Um, but I'm also not saying that we are going to go up significantly either. I think having a pause here, even you know, dare I say a reaccumulation period is going to be healthy. Um, it might, we'll look into this if it's something that is presentable on the table. But I have mentioned, um, you know, in my discord, especially how we, we have fallen below some key levels that keep me from being super bullish here and kind of make me downgrade this back to being slightly bullish or just break even choppy um, and so <clears throat> we'll get into that um, as you guys know with observations I tend to look at the weekly time frames so we'll look at weekly on Bitcoin Ethereum Solana and then I've been wanting to do more coins and observations um, so I think I'll try to cover AVAX um, and then if we have time either FTM or GRT FTM will probably be the one that's more likely since it's up today um, but one of the reasons is I have observations with Otsu, which takes the weekly time frames, but then I also have nowhere market updates on Wednesdays that cover altcoins, but I don't tend to cover the altcoins on Wednesdays from a weekly perspective. So I think I might combine both of those videos into um, observations with Otsu. Everything will stay the same as far as um, you know OWO is concerned. We'll go over this. We'll have the general theme, but I'll maybe just instead of talking too much because i do tend to elaborate i'll shorten my discussions and add a couple coins on top of that and then i'll try to replace something else with wednesdays uh, the thing is is like this tends to be 45 to an hour long my nowhere market updates also tend to be 45 minutes to an hour long and so that's getting kind of hard to do with my time frame so we'll get into that um you know as we go throughout the year i'll have something by the end of the year so that's the introduction um, you know, again, the theme is just, uh, the theme really is just going to be about my Apex scripts today. Um, and I want to address those as well because they have outperformed per se relative to what I've seen, not just on crypto Twitter, but also on uh, the markets in general. Most of my positions um, have already closed. Um, we've been up big. My, my personal trading is, I've had the best trading month I've ever had. Um, my my followers are generally I haven't had anybody complain at least I should say um, everybody seems to be happy or in line with what's going on with Apex I have a lot of back tests I'll I'll explain that this it's too long but so I'll explain that in the theme of this video um, kind of not quite a plug but just kind of talking about that because it is worth talking to like I don't my hesitancy here in my voice is reflective of i'm not trying to sell you something okay not necessarily yes they are for sale yes you can buy them right now yes i'm going to put the links in the description but it's not about that i'm not trying to be a salesman about here i'm trying to look at this from an angle as you know you follow people uh, if, if you know me you know me from twitter i'm, I'm sure um, and so you've followed me you followed other people on twitter and you realize how many influencers just suck nowadays 
you know, I had one guy basically, you know, there's, there's a very high profile influencer that basically said, well, we're going to get 30 something thousand before we get 60 something thousand. Well, yeah, no, no crap. Like we're only $2,000 away from that. So what are you trying to tell me? And so, okay, okay, I'm not trying to make fun of that person, you know, or anything like that, but it's like, is that how low value we have now? You know, focus on, so anyway, what I'm trying to focus on <clears throat> is bringing quality content. I got things through nowhere premium scripts, things like that. So anyway, that's the gist of it. I don't want to get into that. That's going to be the theme for the video. Uh, let's do some preliminaries and then we'll get started. So first things first, I'm going to talk about um, nowhere premium. It is something that I have created in the past month. Uh, we are going on week four. It is a weekly uh, membership. If you want something dedicated to what I do, this is going to be perfect for you. Um, if, you if you like what I post on Twitter and you like what I post on Discord, my Discord is free. This is a premium version of that. It is a place where you can get uh, not just premium discussion, but premium charts, uh, trading positions. You also get a 10 minute video uh, five days a week. And, and that's on top of the free videos that I already do in Discord. And so, you know, you're roughly getting an extra hour's worth of video every week. Um, on top of that, you also have different themes and discussions. So, for example, um, the first week we talked about the Solana ecosystem. We looked at Solana itself, its pros and cons versus Ethereum. We looked at the Solana tokens, <clears throat> looked at some wallets that you can use and integrate, and we kind of went a rundown of how to scout for some coins on CoinGecko. Now, that was a very timely video because so that's a four week old video now. Well, Solana, as you know, it has been up a lot since then. And Solana tokens have also been up since then. We had created a Solana token wallet that we, you know, I own, but I shared the positions in the group and it's gone very well. It's, it's up two and a half X right now. And so that's pretty good for just casual trading. Um, all, we're, all we've been doing is scouting for the coins. We've been doing it together. I've been leading that. But I've been leading it by example, showing that what showing what they are, how to search for them, how to buy them, where to buy them. You know, a lot of people are talking about this Jupiter airdrop. Like we were already trading on Jupiter before you guys were discussing this on Twitter. Okay, so that was just the first video. You get you get two of those videos. Those those are dedicated one hour videos. You get two of those every month, in addition to the regular ten minute videos. And so the next one that we are going to discuss is we're going to discuss the BRC or the Bitcoin ecosystem, talking about ordinals, things like that. Um, and that one has not been published. That That is expected to publish sometime within the next one to three days. And so if you haven't joined, there is a seven-day free trial. It's only 20 bucks a month also. The seven-day trial is free, but after that, it's 20 bucks a month. So it's like less than a cup of coffee per week. I just, I got my wife Starbucks the other day and it was like $7. Okay. So it's cheaper than one Starbucks coffee. And so take that for what you will, uh, depending on where you live in the world, that might be, um, you know, 20 bucks might be a lot or it might be none. I don't know. But what I am trying to say is if you, if you sign up between now to the end of the month, to end of, till New Year's Eve, you get to retain that $20 price point throughout the rest of next year or until you decide to cancel or quit or until you know the group d dissolves for some reason um, i don't plan to dissolve it by any means but you know things can happen what if i might have an emergency whatever so um that price gets locked in so if you sign up between now to the end of the year that price gets locked in and part of that is i'm trying to make a special discount for launch that will be the only discount that i make that'll be the only discount that i offer is that one because $20 is actually kind of low for what I'm offering. I am taking a lot of time, but I also wanted to get a lot of people in the door as a way to say thank you. And that helps understand like what my numbers are so I can rely on that, right? So, cause it helps give me a baseline of interest. And so that's my thank you for doing that. So if you're interested, you can do that. Um, in addition to that, we actually, so we have, in addition to the soul wallet, we actually have three total wallets. We have one that's sold tokens. It's a sold wallet with sold tokens. Uh, we also have a regular trading portfolio. And then we also have a small caps portfolio. And all three of those have been doing pretty well. Um, I think we're up about 15% on the regular portfolio wallet. 
Um, and may, most of that is because we've been focusing, you know, and that's still pretty good. 15% and 15% in three weeks is actually pretty decent. You don't, don't let the crypto crowd tell you that that's a lie. Um, because that's, I mean, I guarantee you if, you know, look, look at your portfolio and see, you know, divide it by 52 weeks, 54 weeks, whatever, and see, you know, how much, what was your average winning percentage? Because an average win of 15% a week is pretty good. So, um, actually that was three weeks. So 5% per week is still pretty good. So you have that going on. And then we have the small caps and the small caps, you know, those are, you know, there's only, I think two tokens that we talked about in the small caps thus far, because again, mainly most of the small caps are sole tokens. So we've been using, that's been going under the sole token portfolio. There are some coins that we traded, you know, for, I think under 10, you know, under 10 million. I think there was one that was 3 million. Um, you know, and the one small cap that isn't a sole token, actually there was two, but um, both of them were, I think under 5 million. I think the one was like 1.5 million or under 1 million. So just keep that in mind. So these are, but I'm making calculated moves with these. I'm not just sharing like, here's a here's a scam coin that, that has $2 liquidity. I'm not doing that, okay? I know groups that do that. I don't do that. If you're looking for lots of small caps to share, I am not the group for you. I share quality only. So you might only get maybe like five a month for small caps, um, but they come as they are. Like I scan basically every two days and I look at that as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So as far as actual trading charts, in addition to all this, um, we've had some pretty significant um, moves here. And I'm just kind of scrolling through this. I actually made a big update uh, yesterday about one weekly time frames. There are there are some coins on the one week that look amazing, amazing. And I won't tell you what they are here. You guys sign up for Nova Premium to look at that. But there's a lot that look really, really good that have not pumped yet that you know have upwards to like 10x potential that are in the market right now. They've been in the market since last cycle and they have not pumped yet. Um, and so that's something that I shared. I'm just kind of scrolling through this still. Um, but you know, we had a position. So this past week we talked about, you know, the polka dot trade. And so that was one that I discussed that we, we basically, um, I don't have the position up right here, but we had the break of this and it went up to target. And so that was, uh, you know, roughly 17% or so. Actually, I think it went beyond, um, oh no, it was 35%. I'm sorry. And so then algo was the other one. Um, and you can verify all this. So the algo trade was is still here, actually. So that was forty percent up to this run, and so that one was pretty good. Um, um, link was another one that we looked at. We and we've closed all these since then. This was the run up to here. Actually, this was a smaller trade up here at the four hour. Uh, we got in it here at this consolidation upwards, and then we sold. I think at the divergence, um, maybe right here. So it was somewhere around this position. We sold here. Um, I don't have the notes on my chart, unfortunately, but um, that's it. So Ray was another one. And so Ray, we've also looked at as well. Um, and that was, what was that? Oh, it's 15. Here it is. Uh, we played the break of this. And the and the idea was play the break of this, close here. And so this actually pumped and then slightly went down afterwards. Um, but that was, we, we made 37% off of that. Um, that doesn't include, we made a gala trade that was, that was good. Uh, let's see, we, I'm just going here. Um, Solana was another one. And, and so Blur, um, and this was kind of an earlier trade um, around Thanksgiving, is that Blur went 71%. And so that was one of our biggest trades that we went that and did. Uh, we, where is it at here? I don't know if that was it or... Um, I don't have my notes, but I think we bought, I think we bought here at the, at this level. Anyway, um, we, we made about 71% total. So overall, those are just some, you know, things that we've done in the group. And so it's been a pretty active group. <clears throat> my, my speaking on this doesn't really do it justice. I do recommend that you, or I don't recommend, but go ahead and sign up for that free trial. If you're interested, you can cancel it immediately after sign up get to seven days for free and so it's been a pretty big discussion and i based off of what i've seen on twitter and people that i've been around um it's hard to beat 
the content with the price point. And so, anyway, if it suits you, go ahead and try it out. If not, that's totally fine. So in addition to that, we also have the Apex script. I actually have three scripts overall, but the Apex script is by far uh, the most favorite of the three. And this is what it looks like right here. So if you're unfamiliar with the, if you are familiar, you can go ahead and skip. <clears throat> if you are not familiar, this script co uses a combination of Arun, Trend, and Momentum um, areas of interest. It scans basically all three of those. It sees what criteria fit all three of them at the same time. And then it gives you a buy or sell signal. In addition to that, <clears throat> it also gives you an entry price area and a stop loss built into it built into the script itself. And so take this for example, if I want to do a long position here, if I want to zoom in, um, and here, let's get rid of this here. So on the daily, and I know this is a little cherry picking just for this, but this is just an example sake. So here is your entry, this dark blue line. When you get the buy signal, this is your entry level right here. And then your stop loss is right there at the red. Very simple. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily match up with the candle close because it does vary, as you can tell. So you have a stop loss here of 4.63%. <clears throat> and then your entry is, you know, like so. Now, it doesn't do take profits for you. That's where, and, and I had some discussion about this um, and, and debate, not just amongst myself, but also among peers and, and even like, like cross-referencing from my followers and things like that, because this has been a, this script has been in testing for, you know, at least a year, probably 18 months. And so one, one reason why there's not take profit targets built in is because everybody takes profit differently. And so that is going to be up to you depending on your risk tolerance, depending on how, you know, risky or more comfortable you want to be. Um, I personally, when I do these, when I do these kind of scenarios with the scripts, I teach my apex trading rules which means you can get out of divergence or what have you. And so um, if you would have took this to target or current price action, you're at 44% at 9.6. And most of you, you know, most people are, are not there. You might be surprised on how formulaic the script is. And so for some of you that may be more susceptible to FUD or FOMO or emotions, or you might just have a bad time trading in general, um, the Apex script is a good... A way to kind of make a good like training wheels type of thing like i i use this day to day and people in my discord know like i have some discord members that are from my old discord that have known me for at least two years and they know that i use this script okay and you know this is available for one-time purchase it's not cheap um and that's one of the reasons it's not cheap is because it has worked for me in the past very significantly. It has outperformed very significantly. It's also available for four month, uh, you know, a four month monthly plan option as well. And so in my experience, this has outperformed when it has mattered the most. Um, and so uh, this past January, uh, so, so last month was probably my biggest month and I can show you the signals here in a second. My second largest month was actually earlier this year in January, where the apex signals gave me over 100 R in one month. And so that's pretty good. Um, and so uh, I just want you to keep that in mind because there's a lot of emotions flowing around right now. Like, oh, we're overextended. We're people are to getting euphoric, you know, things like that. And you know, I think some of that is justifiable. But at the same time, you don't want that to affect your trading. And so this is a good way to let the script takes care of like 75% of what you try to do anyway. And so that's very helpful. Me, one of, one of my biggest struggles about trading in general has always been stop losses, um, not necessarily take profits, but stop losses. And so this is one initial reason why I created the Apex strip so I could handle my own stop losses. Um, in addition to that, I got five back tests that kind of show the, the, the historical back testing of my scripts, how they have been effective, how they have been above market average. And so, you know, again, this is kind of a plug, yes, but at the same time, um, this has outperformed the market. So um, I just want to show you here on the daily so far. So 
it showed a buy signal at 28,000. Who was buying at 28,000? Okay. It's easy to say this now when, when Bitcoin is above 40,000. I was talking about Bitcoin 40,000 last year, technically, but my script has been saying this since 28,000, 28,006. So um, a lot of people were still crapping their pants at 28. They were still expecting 12,000 at 28. Excuse me. <clears throat> and you all have been fooled in that regard for believing otherwise. All right, going forward, you know, uh, for Ethereum, we had a buy signal here at about 1662. Uh, going on to Sol, we had a buy here at $20. Um, where are you guys at with that, right? Um, we're at 68, even with the drop, the recent drop, which isn't really even a drop. Uh, we're up over 3x. So I think that's worth mentioning. Th this, this signal right here itself is going to be worth more than the cost I'm paying for the script. <clears throat> and, and, the, the script price, by the way, is based off of the one trade average. So based off of the back testing. So it can fluctuate. It can go, the price can go lower, but it also can go higher depending on the performance. So the more back testing I do, the, the theory is the more back testing I do, the more accurate it becomes, right? So um, that price can and will fluctuate based off of the price average. And so if it is worth more, then I'm going to be start charging more. So that's up to you to decide if that value, it's it's currently 740 bucks, if you decide that that is worth it for you or not. And so um, based off of this right here, it's, um, yeah, it would have been worth your money already. So <clears throat> going forward with this, XRP had a buy signal here. Um, I mean, depending on how you view this, you would have got stopped out. So I'm just being honest with this. Um, AVAX, you would have got a buy in at 10 bucks. Now you're at 37 where are you guys at with that, right? So these are simple buys. And, you know, I'm not, look, I'm not fudging these. Like you had a, you know, you had a cluster here. But overall, this is pretty healthy. I explained this in the back test, okay? Um, I mean, this is looking pretty good. I explained the results on this in my back test. So nothing's really crazy with that. Uh, buy signal on on Binance, depending on where you were, that might have been stopped out, however. Uh, linked, or chain, chain link, I keep calling it LinkedIn. Chain link is six and a half. Now it's at 14. Okay. Where did you buy with that one? Uh, Dogecoin right here, down here. Um, it's about 75% up from that. FTM, 20 cents. Now we're almost at 40. And we, we hit 40. So at 2x from there. GRT went to nine cents or, or buy in at nine cents, went all the way to 17. Now it's at 15. So it's about 2x from that as well. Matic, there's your, you know, and I'll just <clears throat> stop mumbling and let you see where these buy-ins were and some of these were okay but some of these were amazing um, and most of these you know have 2x 3x um, some of them have even 4x so and that's just yeah I, I'm happy to I'm happy to share this because I'm not afraid to share good things I'm not a, I'm not afraid to share a good script according to its back test according to Almost every metric that I've looked at, it has outperformed, okay? And, you know, you can take it or leave it. I'm not necessarily trying to make you buy it or nothing like that. But if it's something, if you want to support me in that regard, this is a, this is a fantastic way to do it. Fantastic way to do it. Um, because this has been years in the making. Some of these scripts are over four years old that I've been testing, that I've been making sure that they are watertight before I shared them. And so, anyway, I'll digress from that. That's the Apex script. I talked about Nowhere Premium. Let's get into the chart, starting with Bitcoin. All right, so Bitcoin is up first, as usual. Uh, we actually closed bullish last week. So I usually cover the closing candle first, and then we address today's, or this current week's candle. We had eight bullish weeks of price action, so that's pretty good, typically, we don't tend to go higher than that, although we do sometimes. It can go on a parabolic run, um, but typically, it, I mean, that's eight candles is extending it pretty significantly. As you can see, if we take the price marker here, you know, we started this run at about 27.2, and then we ended the top of the last run at about 43.8, almost 44,000. So we actually did hit 44,000. So pretty significant, about 60% run, uncontested. 60% uh, run, that's pretty solid. We don't typically get that. 
And so that's generally a good sign that the market is becoming stronger in that regard. Some people talk about ETF news, and that's the reason to pump, yada, yada, yada. There's, there's a lot of factors in that. You guys know, if you're familiar with my work, you know I don't care about news. Some people say it's you know priced in, which I kind of lean that way. But some people think it's not. I actually don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care about the having. I don't care about any of that stuff. I look at the dang charts, okay? Because the more elements you bring into play, the more complicated it's going to get. Um, there's a reason, like, you know, take it for what it is, but my performance has increased significantly when I simplify my strategies. And I keep saying that over and over to a lot of people. <clears throat> the more simple your strategy, typically the more efficient you're going to be, which typically means you're either going to be more accurate as far as making money, getting the right trades. but And if you're not, you can at least identify them easier to try to refine that and improve it over time. So that's the thing. I made a simple strategy. I, I only look for like tier, like top tier trades. And then the ones that don't work, I refine them. If if I, I either find out where how they how they went wrong or I weed them out, one of the two. And so that's why over time you refine your process and it makes it better, right? So and so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, now, that being said, we had a big drop down <clears throat> over the past two days. And so, you know, this current green doesn't really do it justice. I think we're, how far are we down now? Yeah, about 6% overall. A pretty good, pretty good wick action, all right, because this was down, I think, 7%. And now it's kind of, now I think it's um, up a little bit. We'll get into that. Um, but Arun has started to, um, it triggered into its bearish consolidation very wide. That's, that's what bears want to see. And the wider the wider the consolidation, the more impactful it could be. And so that could be because we've kind of ran almost parabolic to where we're going to reject um, some areas of interest for me. On the low side, you have this right here. Not exactly. I know something that you don't. I know something you probably don't want to see if you're a bull. Um, and I am a bull as well. But you could have a target about 31,800. That's a possibility. And another one is going to be um, this range here. So if you take the top of this and you take the top, the bottom here and you slide it over, there's your range situation here. And so if you, if you could tell, we're kind of resting right here on, on the middle of about 40700 And so if you want bullish price action to continue, this is going to be a good area of interest to maintain that, um, that theme or that narrative. If we go back below, now we're probably um, probably looking at downwards uh, from there. One suggestion would be a fib of this section right here, which would be about 30, 35,500. And so if we go below, if we close below on the weekly, 40,700, then we're probably going to go down to 35,500. And so that's, that's pretty much it. You know, a lot of people don't use these fib blocks, but they actually work very well. And so I'm surprised a lot of people don't use them. In addition, we have the RSI rejection here. And so we've kind of reset back into the range. <coughs> Excuse me. And so now, you know, I'm looking for a retest of 50. In, like, I don't really look at RSI as far as where it should retest things like that. I usually look at oversold territories, look at the 50s, undersold, things like that. So, um, but we went back below the range, which is something you don't want to do if you're a bull. And so, again, this price section doesn't do it justice. We had a pretty good run up yesterday, uh, uh, I guess, opening of Tuesday. Um, and then we had a big drop down about a few hours ago. It had a pretty decent reclaim. We'll see where that goes. I'm I'm more leaning towards having a red week this week. And honestly, that's a bullish thing to say. I think a lot of people get misinterpreted. or um, I, I think a lot of people misinterpret what I say because I'm a big fan of subtrends. Red candles can be healthy to in to to reload for an uptrend, and so that's kind of what I think is going on. But so far, if we hold forty thousand seven hundred, I think that's good. On the daily, here's what that looks like. I'm gonna just erase all this just for cleanliness. <clears throat> and so one one thing that I want to look at here on the daily is that we had this trend going upwards. And so when you have a trend like this and it breaks above, that's usually pretty bullish. However, we had a bearish divergence here and we broke back within the range. So that's something that I don't want to see. It, it's really a deviation, but also 
um, kind of a pushback, kind of a solid rejection as well. So I'm not convinced that we're going to get a big run up as well. And, and I don't want to, I don't really want to say this because I'm pretty well in, invested right now. And so, you know, I think, you know, you got to play your strategies, you got to buy the dips, things like that, but we can kind of get into that later. I'm looking for a 50 bounce on here. Um, as far as this goes, I think we could see something in this range. Uh, you know, a bounce between, you know, 37.1 and 40 or 38.4. <clears throat> and so ARID is looking like it's trying to cross up. So that's a good sign potentially for this to end. I think what we could get is a quick drop down here, bounce back up. So we'll see where that goes. So far, I'm neutral on this. And and more importantly, if you go to like the 12 hour, the Aaron has already flipped bearish from the 12 hour. So I'm waiting for the 12 hour to flip back bullish. So I don't think a lot of people quite understand what I mean by that. Um, Aaron doesn't necessarily flip immediately. So it's like, it's kind of like a trend in that regard. If, you know, the, the trend, let's say the 50 EMA, for example, or even the 200, like 50 and 200, they don't flip right away. They never do. I mean, they might flip one candle or two candles, but they don't flip constantly. And so that's where the a very it differs very much relative to price action is that once once an a trend flips bullish or bearish, it, it can't really flip very strongly um, most of the time. Now, it can in instances like this. But with the positioning as it is like so with at the extremes, typically you're going to get a little bit of a chop or you're going to get a consolidation or a subtrend before you get that trend flip. So that's why I'm saying like I'm not interested in bullish trades right now because the 12 hour is not letting me. OK, once this flips bullish, which it could be, it's already crossing up. So it could maybe do so in the next three candles, which is about a day and a half. And if that happens, then I am interested again. Um, but there is some time and that's one major thing I want to talk about with time is that a lot of people are used to these run-ups already. So they think that they need to lose sleep or, you know, constantly buy this, buy this, you know, buy the dip. You better buy the dip. Any 1%, any 3%, that's the dip, right? Well, not necessarily. You still need to calculate this well. Um, and I think some people have already gotten used to the fast pace. And that can cause you to be more emotional. That can cause you to make more mistakes. And Arun, for me, helps me mitigate those. Knowing that, hey, it's already flipped bearish on the 12-hour. I have time to get back in if that's the case. All right, now I'm going to go to Ethereum, Solana, and I think I'll cover AVAX to end the video. All right, going on to Ethereum on the weekly. So again, had a pretty big run-up, but we had a bearish candle in between. So we had about three weeks of bullish price action. <clears throat> we finally broke this about two weeks ago uh, over a long standing, like one year consolidation period. Um, but now we close right around the resistance point. I already actually kind of barely broke above, but I wouldn't quite call that a deviation, mainly because my, my chart could be off as far as this fib block is concerned. And so where I would probably adjust it is the top of this range. And then you could even you could even do it like so, like right here. And so this could either be intact, depending on how you view this. This is kind of actually a very unique situation. Because if you view it based off of this low, then we've are we already broke into the range two weeks ago, broke it back up, and now we're retesting the lows, which is a bullish sign, actually. And even if we don't count it, it still is retesting this, which is still a bullish sign. Um, if we talk about, depending on where you want to go with this wick, um, it um, it just depends on where you want to where you want to play that. So what I would rather do is take a fib, another one, and talk target the top of this, and then target the low, and then you you, you fold it over, and that's where you go, and then that's where you put the line, okay, and then you can get rid of this, and so that's what you got. Now retest basically right on that, basically where I had it in the begin with. Broke down below, not a deviation, um, and it is a retest. So this is pretty good. So as far as the quick view on this, we are stuck within a mini range now between 23.50 and 21.40. And so for me, 
it's just playing the break of this. Um, I am not interested. I am in a long, a long-term long, but I'm not interested to add any more unless this breaks above or goes down below. Um, and that's really as simple as that. Ethereum has been very simple, um, sometimes frustratingly so, in regards to that. Arun is under a bearish consolidation, has been for, actually it just started, I'm sorry. Um, and it's at 33%, so we got um, six more weeks to go until that breaks down. Um, RSI is kind of just floating around. No, no big deal on that one. Here's how that looks. Technically, we do have a deviation on the day, on the day side. We do have um, a slight divergence as well. So a lot of these have had divergences. And um, a lot of us have kind of even forgotten about this over time. People tend to forget about TA the more bullish that we go. People talk about being degens. People talk about, you know, soft hands, blah, blah, blah. But you still need to keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with taking a little bit of profits at a time. I'm not saying take everything. I'm not saying take nothing either. Do it according to your 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 own personal um, needs and approach to the system. Because some of you, you know, and my wife, me and my wife had a conversation about this last week. Um, it like or earlier this week, like how would I tell some like what would I tell someone if they are first started trading about what they should do? And it just depends who you are. Are you single and twenty? Well, I'm going to tell you something different, as if you're forty and married. See what I'm saying? Or you have multiple kids. Or maybe you're single and you have kids. Or maybe you're in a different country. Or maybe you're trying to go to school. Or maybe you, um, you know, regardless of whether you're marital status or not, maybe you have a lot of debt. Maybe you don't have a house. Maybe you have two houses. Maybe you have three cars. See, all that plays into effect. You know, and if you're interested in that, I might do some personal finance stuff, you know, towards... You know, towards the summer um, of 2024, that, that's something I'm going to wait till after I get all my other stuff launched. Because what I really would like to do is start talking about personal finance. <clears throat> because sometimes I don't like broad stroking like all this TA because I know some of you, like I have followers that are like 18, 20 years old. Okay. I have followers that are 50 years old. Okay. I've, I've had, you know, people talk to me of all shapes and sizes. So, and that takes different approaches to that. So anyway, I'll digress from that. But as far as Ethereum goes, had the slight deviation divergence. I'm not too, consi not, not too concerned about the divergence or the, the deviation here. Um, some of you guys really kind of criticize me, not, not negatively necessarily, but I get a lot of constructive criticism about every little thing that I say. And so, for example, like the deviation, I know I'm going to get something that says, well, this this deviation happened. This is a big, this is pretty big deal. You say it's a big deal all the time. And, and well, yes, I do. But you also need to keep in mind the weekly perspective. Keep in mind all these other things, all these other factors. So on the weekly, it is not, divert, it is not um, deviating. So the weekly still looks pretty clean. <clears throat> And that's pretty much it for the daily. We have a bull, our bearish wedge coming to play, but we also have a 50 potential bounce. Um, and so we'll see what happens with that. Um, so that's Ethereum. Let's go to Solana. All right, Solana is next. I already have some chicken scratch on here. Um, but, you know, honestly, other than the shape of this, this is very similar. So you had a, a different type of consolidation period, bigger impulse. So Solana had a much more bigger effect on the market. <clears throat> but we still have the same thing. We still have the weekly resistance here after a run up. We still even had that middle marker, just like Ethereum. And so, um, fierce rejection going on. Like so, so a pretty similar premise overall. Um, we did kind of get overextended, but we kind of reset back a little bit. So this is looking okay. However, the slope on here is very concerning to me. Very simple, and sometimes it's considered dumb, even by my, even by me. Where the slope, if the slope is too high, typically we just break that because demand has has to go higher to achieve the same amount of result as it would horizontally. So typically it will correct. And so that means that we're going to break down potentially. But as far as this goes on the weekly, it's still intact. Um, looking at current price action, this still looks okay. Very, very wide bearish consolidation, especially if we close the weekly like this. And that's not a good sign. 
Um, and that's all the way down here at 11. So that would be a wedge um, potentially in a week or two, uh, about two weeks. So this, I don't think people understand this. Like if this fails below this level at like 65, we could be going to an extended downtrend. We're talking four to eight weeks. And so I think a lot, and that's why I mentioned earlier um, in the video that I think a lot of you guys need to slow down. I think a lot of you guys are thinking that everything is going to run super fast. We're going to get to 200,000 Bitcoin tomorrow, things like that. Like that's, that's not happening. Okay. It's not happening. So, and you know, I'm prepared in case it happens, but I'm also prepared if it doesn't, because you need to understand how the market's going to work. It will go down in many cases, as much as 30%. Can you stomach that? Some people cannot. And one reason that people cannot is because they buy in too late. And that's kind of why I emphasize buying as early as you can. Um, because that matters. Because <clears throat> right now, if you bought at $20 or less, you are up at least 3x right now. And you can stomach going down to $50. Um, but somebody that's bought at $50 may not be able to stomach going back to their break-even point. That matters significantly. And so I don't... If you learn anything from today, learn that. Like, get in as early as you can, the best you can. I know it's not always the best scenario for some people. Some people don't have the money to get in right away. And because sometimes you get a good entry, but the counterbalance is that you have to wait for two months before something happens. You know, like so, you know, you know, people, some, there's some people that bought in below $10 technically. And, you know, let's say you bought in like $14, like right here. You had to wait pretty much the entire year to get anything of benefit out of that. Um, and now you're now you, that's well earned. Right. But for somebody that bought here at like 56, you're, you're probably stressing. And, and that's that's understandable. Um, but at the same time, you got to be proactive in that regard. So um, and nothing wrong if you didn't do it. It happens. It happens. To everybody it happens to me. I, I missed AVAX. I did not buy AVAX at all. And look at what happened. And so that's embarrassing to me, but it, it happens. It happens to everyone. And and one reason why I didn't even get into AVAX is because sometimes it's best not to get into everything at once. I've learned that over time. That's also why I share my trades is because sometimes I, I don't care if you have a billion dollars, you can't get into every trade. Well, if you have a billion, you could, but <clears throat> you can only spread your capital so much to where it becomes a detriment. And so what I would rather do is like focus on, you know, put more risk into more coins that I'm sure or have a good idea that will go up or in my favor versus taking 20 trades. And some people do it. I know, I know some people that make good money off taking 50 trades at once every day. <clears throat> um, that's just not me. I usually just take maybe two or three a day and you know increase my risk to counterbalance that 50 and then it works out for me do whatever works for you <clears throat> but as far as the weekly this is our current setup we want to hold above 65 you know basically 65 even in, on that regard daily this is what that looks like we're deviating here we want to close this a good start to maintain this would be closing above 68 dollars and 55 cents or 68 24 i'm sorry and we're pretty close to that if not excuse me if not we're going back below there if you want to take the fib structure on this then you're looking you know about 59 just just tapping just under the 60 dollar range and so we'll see um, i'm personally looking at 58 dollars myself got the bearish wedge in play um pretty pretty significant to focus on that confluence of a bearish price action i i do i i really am convinced that we have topped for like two weeks. Um, and that's not what I want to share. It's not what I want to say. Um, but that's just what I see. That's just what I see. Um, another thing is the R side is still above the 50. I would look for a daily reaction here at the 50. I think that would be amazing. In fact, I'm going to actually put that on alert because that would be um, a significant bounce point potentially. So what we could do is we could go to the $58 range, bounce back above, and then we're smooth sailing again. So that's possible. Um, but that's <clears throat> soul in a nutshell. Um, I think I'll end the video there. No, I'll go to AVAX. So we'll do AVAX and then we'll end the video. All right, so AVAX. <clears throat> have not covered it very often, but um, one thing you want to see here is you have a massive 
bullish candle um kind of just out of nowhere and honestly this presents a few different things <clears throat> i'm not as convinced about avax as i am about others and there's a few reasons why one um it is not a leading coin in the market as far as momentum as far as it, it, it is a leading coin as far as narrative and so there's there's a little bit of difference in that so one of the reasons avax has a high interest right now is because people were looking at the solana ecosystem people were buying tokens on that ecosystem i mean so they went to switch to avax to look at tokens on there <clears throat> thinking that you can just go from chain to chain buying the tokens on each chain like that now the problem is is that's going to have diminishing returns and so yes avax did pump relative to everything else for the past week um, but let's look at the significance on this. So like even, you know, from the breakout from like a month ago, you know, it's up 1x. And so the, honestly, that's that's not a lot. That's, that's really not a lot. I mean, it is a lot, but not a lot compared to Solana that has went up 3x. And so even if you go down here from the very bottom, you, you have, you know, 311%. Um, but then if you go from from the bottom from here, even the current price action is almost 600. So Solana has doubled the performance, even when I'm handicapping Solana's performance to, to discuss that. And so that's where it comes to mind. I don't think AVAX is as potent as people want it to be. I think people are trying to use AVAX as a means to get um, their version of Solana because they missed out. Um, now, yes, that, that, you know, I understand how, you know, um, how hypocritical that could sound because I did not get into AVAX and I did get into Solana. But I, 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 I've seen that in other cycles before. People get into other coins because they didn't get into others. And so, hey, and again, I, I, do, I celebrate anybody getting wins. So it's nothing, it's nothing like that, right? Um, but that's just basically what I see. Another thing that I see is the, or the RSI is pretty significantly up it's already 84% on the weekly, which is relatively high. It's only been up higher one other time in its history. And we had a drop down from that. And we did not recover for almost six months from that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Actually, um, we went twice, sorry. Uh, twice above that. And both times were local tops. So just keep that in mind. And so um, I think best case scenario, we move up to $55 and then we reject. And so that is, you know, about 50% from now. Um, if we, you know, there's no consolidation, nothing like that. So if we go to the daily, um, no divergence, nothing like that. Um, everything looks healthy so far. It does look a little bit extended, but nothing's unhealthy about it per se. Um, I think it would be a good idea to take profits if you have a lot of profits to take advantage of. Um, but other than that, there's nothing nothing really unhealthy about this there is a, a like a long divergence here and so that is a little bit concerning you also have the slope um and so which that is currently breaking down so if this breaks down here <clears throat> then i think we're looking at probably 33 dollars, probably 35 first and then 33 um and that's one thing to keep in mind i had um i think i had a trend line here but it it broke so or no, that's not it. Oh, anyway, we had a pretty, for, forget all, forget what I just said. So we had a big rejection thus far. Um, and so we, we are already down 12% from that rejection. And so this is kind of what that looks like. That's not typically a good sign. Um, and so here is your liquidity area here. It broke down below it. It's rejecting below it as well. So again, this is kind of leading towards the fact that we are going to go to a downtrend. Even the fact that Adam is up 17% also tells me that, again, it's a chain that has its own tokens. People are trying to get into different tokens. DOT is another one. <clears throat> and so you can see the ones that are up generally are the ones that have their own tokens. Um, you know, FET, I guess, is not an example of that. But um, you see what I'm saying? So... I'm just keeping that um, in mind overall. But AVAX still looks okay, but I do think you need to be a little watchful about that. So anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, I got to run, but I hope this has served you well, and I hope you have a good day. But just overall, I want to kind of summarize. I think it's worth being cautious here. It's worth being kind of neutral. 
waiting for the Aaron trend on the 12 hour for me. That's what I'm looking at. It's also bearish on Ethereum. Um, it's not, it's bearish on XRP. <clears throat> um, Solana and AVAX are still okay. Linked, uh, Chainlink is also bearish. Um, Dogecoin just turned bearish on 12 hour. And so, and GRT as well. And then you also got, um, you know, Adam just turned bullish. So that could be a different change. So just keep that in mind overall. Um, and, and with with all that, I don't see a significant flip of the bullish price action just yet. I think it's worth taking a pause. And hey, it's the holiday season as well. So you might need that extra break as well. So let me know what you think. Comment below, like, subscribe, sign up for my Apex scripts and Nowhere Premium if you would like. And I'll see you next time.